Hello there, Tony Medley once again and a nice warm welcome back to my workshop. Um, today's project, uh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Um, with the lockdown being still on, well, call it lockdown, uh, there seems to be plenty of people milling about. I know that they've, they've said you can have unlimited exercise now, but the club that I'm in, uh, the wood turning club, um, give us a, 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 day, a, a weekly challenge and they asked for every all the members to, to make something and send it into our Facebook page and um, they've, they've asked this week to do a, a thin stem goblet well I've got a, a nice piece of cherry here and um, I've had it a couple of years now but I did make a goblet from it not probably six months ago or so and uh, it had a lovely grain on it so what I'm going to attempt, they haven't asked for it, but I'm going to put a couple of uh, captive rings on it. And um, so what we'll do, we'll get it into the lathe, we'll get it turned down slightly. I'll just put it in with step centres, get a chucking point on it, turn it round, and then we'll uh, shape the goblet end of it. Well, I've put a, uh, mark the centres off, and we're just going to put a little punch hole in it. That makes it ideal for putting it into the step centre. Now it's just to put in the step centre, our centres, and just wind that to go nicely in the middle, and that's it. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to put a, a tenon on this end, so it will go into a chuck, and then uh, I, I, I just find it uh, a little bit more safer to put it into the chuck. So we'll get it in and then the, the, uh, put the tail stock back up once it's in the chuck and get a bit of shape into it. Right, I've put the chuck in, so we'll put that in, wind it up. I like to put the tail stock up just for a little bit of added security. And then we'll tighten it into the chuck. Right, I've turned it round as I've just said. Um, all I'm going to do, I've marked in about two and a half inches from the end there. That'll do for the little bit of goblet. And then obviously we'll make the goblet part, hollow it out, then we can make this uh, the foot on the bottom uh, ready to part off and then we'll try and get a couple of captive rings in here if we can. I'm using the 8mm um, Hope Hollowing system and if you can see, I've, I've explained this in, in other videos, uh, that it is a square bar and when you present it to the tool rest, that is at a 45 degree angle, it's, it's optimum cutting so it's very very rare that you would get a catch, it's so sharp, uh, absolutely wonderful tool. Um, all I'm, what I intend to do is just keep stopping and making sure that we keep Try to keep the same curvature inside as the external part and you know hollow it out. Right, 
got to the shape, roughly to the shape that I want it, um, I'm going to sand it and put some sealer on before we start to take it down. Always use some type of pork stick to uh, to go down to the bottom. Obviously, never stick your finger in because if you do catch it, you'll break your finger off. So, always use a, some type of stick, and you can get. I know it's only a couple of inches in, but uh, you don't want to be putting your finger in more than half an inch. Just for a little bit of added security, I like to put the tailstock uh, up against it while I'm uh, shaping the stem. And all I do, I've, I put a little piece of wood in there, and just very lightly, just to take the strain, just no pressure on it, just so it keeps it nice and parallel. What I prefer to do, and it's not necessary, but I prefer to put the captive rings on first. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to measure out two half inch uh, lengths so that we can carve, uh, use the um, captive ring tool to carve the ring onto it. So all I'm going to do is mark two half inch ones then take a little bit of uh, wood away and then we can carve them out. I'm just going to take uh, probably 10 mil off um, just to, for the, uh, the diameter of the two captive rings. Obviously they don't want to be bigger than the foot. All I'm going to do is just mark two, two marks for half inches, or should I say I'll make two half inch marks, I think they're a little bit over, that's a, so it just wants to be on the inside of them marks. Right, I've got them down that little bit, so all we're going to do now is round these two tops off and then sand them, and it's important to sand them before we part them off. It's now time to part the, um, the rings off and I've just got a captive ring tool, you don't need to use that, what you can do is sharpen uh, an allen key or something like that or make your own uh, and all we're going to do is just nibble away either side of it and make it round.
To sand the, uh, the insides of the rings, it's a simple process and all we do is just wrap a little piece of tape around it or something, sandpaper with some tape. Make sure it's nice and tight, as tight as you can get it. And obviously leaving as much sandpaper as possible. And then it's just a matter of um, turning the, the machine up, but careful of your fingers. Just nice and gentle. And just work it round. Until you get the majority of, of it round. I'm just going to turn that lathe down because I think it's going far too fast. Right, try to grip hold of one. That's far better. I don't know why I didn't turn it down to start with, but that is sanding a lot better that. So just turn it over to get the edges. Then, about a 45 degree angle. And you just keep doing that until you get it nice and sanded inside. Then put a smaller or a higher grit sandpaper. But please be careful when you are doing this for your fingers. Right, we've got that other shape that we wanted. All it needs is sanding now. And I'll just take the tape off. And we'll see what it's looking like. All it needs now is sanding up, uh, cleaning up with some polish, and then it should be okay. Then we'll need to part it off.
well I've got it done and you can see uh, it's quite nice I'm not sure about it being thin but if, if you make them any thinner as soon as you take them into the house they bend over straight away so I've had them really thin up to about probably two or three millimeters that in total is eight millimeters so uh, I think if you go any thinner than that then obviously um, you get problems with them starting to bend and twist because the, uh, the the woods or even though you dry it out I've still have them where the, the bend over as soon as, as soon as you take them into the heat anyway uh, finish the bottom off all uh, the two uh, captive rings uh, we, I wasn't asked to for the two captive rings but I just prefer them with them on so uh, yes all in all it's got me out of the house for a couple of hours anyway hope you enjoyed that video same as I enjoyed uh, making it um, if you haven't already please subscribe um, all I can say is thank you very much for watching and I'll catch up with you on the next video thank you now bye